All right, so today I'm going to show a little bit about the uh, uh, spring and valve that I made for my ram pump. Um, this is my spatula spring waste valve. I'm not exactly sure what to call it. It looks like a spatula to me, so uh, that's what I'm going to call it for now. Um, I am still double acting on my ram, so this is pure spring water coming in and the creek water uh, in the single acting part of the ram is actually pumping this pure spring water all the way up the hill for me and it's been doing really good um, so this spatula spring waste valve that i made um, i'm not going to show you step by step how i made it but this thing is so simple me just taking it off and showing you how it's made should be plenty enough uh, to get some people you know some good ideas on how to make one of these um, so first of all, I've been going through this issue with my RAM where the waste valve would fail to cycle. And, you know, it would run for five or six hours or sometimes all night long, and it would be running in the morning. But for some reason, there was some weird blip or hiccup in the system somewhere. And I know it's not air. I've troubleshooted basically everything you can think of. And what it came down to is the waste valve, for some reason, it would, it would fail to cycle. And like I said, I got all 100% of the air out. I diagnosed everything that I thought it could possibly be. And what it came down to is, I, I, you know, the waste valve, for some reason, I just could not get this thing to continue running. And I tried uh, one-way check valves. I tried foot valves, weights, springs. I've tried everything you can think of. And, of course, I'm sure there's still something that I could have done. But um, what I ended up doing is I ended up making this, you know, like I said, uh, spatula waste valve, I guess is what I'm calling it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take it off, show you how it's made, and I'm going to tell you right now, this thing is probably the easiest, cheapest, simplest, yet at the same time, 100% fully adjustable waste valve that you can possibly make at home. And so, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pop it off. Alright, so, down here, well actually the whole thing should come off, yeah. So this is the spring spatula, spring waste valve here. Um, first of all, down here on your T connection for your waste valve, oops. Okay, first of all, down here on your T connection, I've got a regular, uh, whatever size your RAM is, mine's an inch and a quarter. It's a, a threaded coupling on there. And then down here, as tight as possible, you know, I, I cranked it down as tight as I can because I wanted to make sure I had a few threads on top. This is the section of a different one-way check valve or a different foot valve that I cut. And this thing is probably like two or three millimeters wide. It's uh, this section right here. It's got the threads on it. So right down at the bottom where you can see those threads on the bottom of the foot valve, I cut it like two or three millimeters wide, really thin and I threaded it on to give myself a stop point. This is kind of like a backing or a stop point for the next part that I have to thread on, which is uh, this foot valve right here. Now this foot valve, I cut off the brass bracket. There was like an A-frame bracket on top. I cut that off because you don't need it. Um, of course, the bottom of it is all stock. Everything is, you know, threaded still. I didn't mess with the inside, the internals at all, the valve seat or anything. Um, on the inside of this, I made my valve out of an old skateboard wheel. And I know that sounds kind of weird at first, but um, I'm not worried about it being food grade because this is creek water that I'm pumping. I'm not drinking that water anyway. This is a double acting ram. So like I said earlier, it's pumping pure spring water through the double acting mechanism, which I've got another video on how all that works. And I've got a, uh, this is some kind of a rubber, um, it's just like a flat plate, some kind of a gasket that I found in the garage. Um, the only money I spent on this valve is, is really this foot valve. This is about $20. And then of course I've got a stainless steel bolt sticking all the way through the skateboard wheel. And you've got, you know, washers to help, uh, you know, grab onto it and hold it tight and everything. And then you have your two adjusting nuts, which go on your spatula spring. Um, I had to weld that little section in because I accidentally cut it out. I didn't realize that I would need it because um, I kind of just kind of made this thing up. Um, of course, I got the idea from, you know, uh, you know, the other ram pump companies have things like this. 
But anyways, um, this is your adjusting nut right here, these two nuts right here. So if I crank these up, both of them up, it's going to increase the amount of, of space that this valve can go down, which is going to increase your water, which is going to increase your hammer and increase the water output that you get out of your ram. If you crank them downward, both of them down, it's going to decrease the size of your stroke, decrease the water waste, decrease the water output, and decrease the hammer effect on your ram. So you can adjust the stroke with these two nuts right here. Very easy, very simple to, uh, to adjust. This weight back here, I know it's pretty ugly, but um, it's got threads all the way through, and the bottom is open. There's no threads on the very bottom part of it. But basically, if I loosen this, I can slide this forward. Now, this section of the spring here acts like a lever arm, okay? So the closer that you get to this center of the valve, you know, you slide it all the way up, the more weight that you're going to be putting on the center of this valve, all right? This part right here acts like a lever arm. And so... Um, I can show you a little bit of an adjustment while it's running, just to kind of see what I'm talking about. But when you bring it closer, it puts more weight on the center of the valve. It's really important to have that kind of adjustment. I'm not using it right now. I've got it all the way back. I just have my stroke wide open. But if I ever needed to use more water, more creek water or waste water, I can move that forward and it'll make the ram pump run slower. And you get more water out of that. You get more water waste and a, and a bigger water hammer effect. Um, and then of course, I've got a hole at the bottom so that my threads here on the pump fit through that hole, and then this right here fits on top of those threads and it actually tightens down. So this thing is really secure, and um, oh, I'm on the creek. Um, I've got, you know, this thing is fully adjustable. You can adjust the stroke here. You can adjust the weight that gets put on your valve. And technically, um, a lot of times they have a spring here with like a bolt sticking through it. So that you can adjust the spring tension of this of this spring. Uh, well, what I did is I messed with it a little bit, and I, I watched it run, and I let it run and work and everything, and I adjusted the spring tension of this right here. This is the actual spring, and I've got it into a place where I like it right now. So it's it's already pushing down slightly on the valve to help it cycle, and that's good enough for me. I mean, it, it's been running, and this thing. Uh, I don't see it stopping anytime soon unless I manually shut it down. It ran for about three days in a row without any problems whatsoever, so I'm, I'm really happy with how it's running. And uh, that's about it. Um, hopefully that was enough detail to kind of show you guys, or show anybody watching, how to build one, how it's set up. Um, of course, you got to drill a hole in the top of your spatula part right here. And that's about it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get the ram running again. Um, I loosened this bolt right here. Uh, I didn't talk about that, actually. The way, the way I built it is this is just some type of a... I think it's a car part or something I found in the garage. It has threads in it, so I can stick a bolt in there to tighten it down. But this bracket on here goes all the way down underneath this uh, spring here, and it comes out on the other side, so I can slide it forward and backwards if I want like I said earlier, to kind of increase that torque on the lever arm, putting more weight on the center of your spring. So I'll show you how that actually adjusts real quick. And then I'm gonna throw it back and uh, you know where I had it and just tighten it down and, and let it run. But, uh, but like I said, I mean, this thing is running amazing compared to how it was running before. I haven't had any problems with it. You literally just have a valve sticking through here. Oh, and by the way, that skateboard wheel, I meant to talk about that a second ago. Um, skateboard wheels are made out of polyurethane, which is an incredibly strong shock absorber. Uh, they're designed to withstand the pressure and the beating of somebody that weighs 150 or 200 pounds slamming on the asphalt over and over and over again without breaking. And so I, uh, I cut it at kind of an angle so that it fits up in the valve seat. And like I said, I just stuck a bolt through it, but... Um, it's working really well, and like I said, it's it's not going to break anytime soon because it's made out of polyurethane, and uh, once again, I'm not worried about it being food grade because this is creek water that I'm pumping uh, through here, and uh, it's it's literally as simple as that. I mean, you got twenty dollars for the check uh, for the foot valve. Everything else I salvaged from the garage. This used to be uh, this spatula spring here used to be an old yardstick made out of metal. And so I literally just cut out this shape with an angle grinder. You know, I wanted this kind of thin so it has some spring tension to it. 
and I think the way I've got it set is that this bottom part is straight on the bottom of the foot valve and I have it bent so that this spatula valve is like right touching the top. So that's all the spring tension you need, you know. You can see it, it, it wants to bounce back downward and that's what helps keep the ram pump cycling. But let me go ahead and get this thing running again. Here's the spring water and then the creek water. You can see how it slows down when that weight is put more on the valve. You hear how slow that is? You got a bigger water hammer, more wastewater, and more water output. And you hear it speed up.